All right, great to have Ron Coomer with us oh, from the uh, radio nice booth. How are you, Ronnie? Good, good, See, good. Look at how far apart Pat and JD are. See, uh, let's no love over, over there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drop a Spinal Tap line on you. Don't touch anything. Don't even look. You mean like this? JD stuff. <laughs> how are you, Ron? Nobody can throw strikes all of a sudden. What's going on? Yeah, it's been one of them games today where, for both teams, it's the walk has bitten both both pitching staffs. For Kennedy, two walks and the home run. To Villanueva, our two uh, fell buena. And then Cubs pitching here last couple innings have struggled throwing the ball over the plate. Kennedy stays in. You know, it's, JD mentioned last night, wind blowing straight out. Cubs got six. Padres were shut out. It's been more of an offensive night tonight with the wind blowing in. But that tells you if pitchers execute, you can get people out. And if they don't, you've got a chance. Yeah, this is one of those games to me. It, this is this series so far has been very Wrigley Fieldish, where you get one day where the winds blowing out and everybody swinging up and trying to elevate the baseball. Today it's a game of making sure you do the little things right, getting bunts down, stealing bases, playing small ball, and you get one home run. So Kennedy against Chris Coglin. So was your partner a little nervous now he's going to be singing the seventh inning stretch without you without me for the first time. Um, I kind of forced the issue a little bit. Uh, there was a <laughs> cancellation tonight something to do with it and uh, <clears throat> Caitlin August from uh, the Cubs marketing staff asked us to do it. I said you know what JD's going to do it tonight. I'll do it the next time. So we need to, we need to get him out there by himself. There you go. Got a tough act to follow too after Mark Grant yesterday. He was great and Eddie Vedder tomorrow night. Yeah. So he's the opening act. A 1-1 one, one fouled off. How are you enjoying your first year in the Cubs radio? I'm having a great time. It's, it's great to be back home, first of all, in Chicago and back at Wrigley Field where I grew up coming to ball games as a little kid. And, you know, and all of that and, and being partnered with Pat on the radio side and, you know, getting to know you guys. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. Coughlin strikes out. Well, you have fit right in. And I'm sure, yeah, it does bring back a lot of memories for you, not only uh, as a fan, but as a Cub player. Oh, absolutely. It, it was exciting to get back here to play as Kennedy with that good knuckle curveball. He's got a sharp bender going down towards the dirt. When he throws strikes early in the count, he can really put you away. Came in third in the league in strikeouts. He's got six tonight. Now, Buena with a game tying three run homer, his last time up, squared the bunt. And took ball one. Let's check out our Xfinity high speed action. Got a hanger and he took advantage. Yeah, he really did. And he hit that ball to straight right field. It's one of the only spots, really, that the ball's going to carry where it can get out of here today with the wind blowing in as hard as it is. And the Cubs bullpen now will try to keep the Padres close. I mentioned this earlier when the Padres score four runs they're 30 and five their pitching staff especially their bullpen has been really good. Now they traded Houston Street their closer last week. Still a very formidable bullpen. They've got some some guys that can come in they kind of sling the ball up there good arms thrown in the mid 90s. Swing and a miss one and two. You dressed appropriately tonight. Are you wearing socks? That's the big question. You know, you know the answer to that. Come on now. <laughs> and you're okay? I'm fine tonight. I actually put on a long sleeve shirt today, so I'm okay. It's low on Valbuena. Now you went back to the Twin Cities for the All Star game. How was that? Home run derby, All Star game? It was outstanding. I thought the uh, Twins and the Twin Cities did a great job of hosting. Mark Grant yelling at me across the booth. <laughs> My old friend from Joliet, Illinois. Venable back now, way in. And he's got it for out number two. Boy, the wind can really play havoc on these fly balls today. Infielders got to be aggressive going out, and outfielders got to make sure they don't drift on the ball. Kennedy's got good stuff. That two seam fastball just darted down. Yeah, we, we play the uh, AL Central next year, so uh, you know you're going to look at that schedule the minute it comes out. And I would love to go back to Target Field, man. We were there 
three years ago it was beautiful great downtown ballpark yeah it is it's a great great ballpark great facility and you're asking about the all star game I thought Twin Cities did a very good job of hosting the twins did a great job you know in the all star game you've been to them they're just a lot of fun it's 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 a great representation of our game with the stars of the game the stars that used to play the game and it's just really fun. 2 and 0 now on Nate Sherholtz. Nice crowd tonight, 30,718. For the most part, it looks like everybody prepared with the weather. A lot of tank tops and shorts last night. That was in the TV booth. Boy, what a difference a day will make here in Chicago, isn't it? It's amazing. 89, I think, at game time. <laughs> Yesterday and 62 tonight. <laughs> Kevin came prepared. Uh -huh. The 3 0. He walked him. Wow. Five walks now by Kennedy in the last three innings. Boy, and you just don't see that. Usually he has better command. And Tishner's been a little tight behind home plate, too. He hasn't given that pitch down in the zone. He didn't give the pitch down to Water earlier in the ball game. And this pitch by Kennedy. Good movement on a fastball, but that pitch is wide. So it's Castile. As Kennedy nears 100 pitches. Ooh, broke his bat. Kennedy able to get out of the way as the ball ended up foul out of play. But with those maple bats and they break like that, surprised more people haven't been hurt. The old ash bat, you know, it would break in half, but it wasn't that jagged edge right. that you see now. B's done a good job of studying the issue and trying to identify the, the bats that are more susceptible. Terrible sound for a hitter. <laughs> Which number 100 is a strike. 0 oh 2. There's Junior Lake. On deck. We're with Ron Coomer. JD went over to hang with Pat for a half inning. So we decided to steal Ron away. And enjoyed listening to you and Pat when we've had the rare day off. Another broken bat. Castillo hit it right back to the pitcher. And that will end the inning. All right, Coom. Make sure all the pins are uh, in place and uh, always a take? pleasure. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> That's Ron Coomer. JD's back with me in the seventh five at three pods.